Hello and welcome to my tutorial on reducing unwanted energy transfers. Today's learning objectives are to explain how lubrication reduces frictional forces and to explain how insulation reduces the rate of energy transfer by heating. So for our starter activity, I'd like you to fill in the gaps below to complete the conservation of energy principle. I've included the missing words at the bottom of the screen, but in the incorrect order. To give yourself time to complete this starter activity, press pause on the video. You can then press play when you're ready to go through your answers. Okay, so according to the conservation of energy principle, we know that energy can be transferred usefully, stored or dissipated but can never be created or destroyed. Now, in today's tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on how energy can be dissipated. Now, what do we mean by dissipation of energy? Well, when energy is transferred between stores, not all energy is transferred usefully. In other words, it doesn't transfer into the store where you want it to go to. And this energy is wasted energy or dissipated energy. So to ensure we understand what is meant by dissipating energy, what I would like you to do is I would like you to try and attempt this activity where you match each question on dissipating energy with one of the answers below. Now to give yourself time to answer this activity, I would like you to press pause on your video and only press play when you've completed all of the questions. Okay, so hopefully for question one, you said that when energy is transferred between stores, not all energy is transferred usefully, i.e. into the store that you want it to go. So what happens to this energy? Well, it's this energy that is dissipated. Question two, which store does energy usually dissipate to? Well, usually it's into thermal energy stores. Ultimately, the thermal energy store of the surroundings. Question three, what is another name for dissipated energy? Wasted energy. So dissipated energy is often known as wasted energy. Why is friction not helpful in many situations? Well, friction can cause energy to be dissipated to the surroundings, which is often unwanted. So have you ever noticed your mobile phone will feel warm if you've been using it for a while? Well, this is an example of energy being dissipated. A mobile phone is a system and when you use your phone, energy is transferred usefully from the chemical energy store of its battery. However, in this transfer, some of this energy 
is dissipated to the thermal energy store of your phone. And that's why your phone will warm up. Now, machinery and mechanical equipment of all types require lubrication to protect their components from detrimental effects of friction. So when an object moves, there is usually at least one frictional force acting against it. This results in energy in this system being dissipated. When objects rub together, there is friction between the object's surfaces as they move. And lubricants are used to reduce this friction. Lubricants are usually liquids, like oil, and this means they can flow easily between the objects and coat them. And the particles of the lubricant fill the gaps between two rough surfaces, as shown in this diagram here, making them smooth. Now, insulation, also reduces the rate of energy transfer by heating. So to enable us to understand how insulation works, what I would like you to do is try and match each question here with its answer. Whilst you're completing this activity, please press pause on the video to give yourself some time to answer. So, question one, what is thermal conduction? Well, this is a transfer of internal energy by collisions of particles and movement of electrons within a body. What is convection? Well, convection is a transfer of heat due to the bulk movement of molecules within fluids. Question four, sorry, question three, what is radiation? Well, radiation is a transfer of heat energy by electromagnetic waves without involving particles. Question four, if we said a material had a high thermal conductivity, what would this mean? Well, it means it can transfer a lot of energy in a short amount of time. Question five, what is another name for a material with a low thermal conductivity? Well, we call these insulators. Now, if you struggle to answer these questions, I would recommend that you have a look at my videos on conduction, convection and radiation to ensure that you've got a really good understanding of how energy transfer by heating can take place. So how does heat escape from your house? Well, the thermogram shows the distribution of heat over the surface of a house. It highlights where heat is being lost. It shows the temperature variations ranging from white to yellow for the warmest areas where you've got the greatest heat loss, through red to purple and green for the coolest areas where you've got the greatest insulation. Now, these images are often used to determine whether insulation is needed or to serve as a quality control tool to ensure that any insulation that has been installed 
has been installed correctly. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to try and answer these three questions. Looking at that thermogram, which parts of the house are poorly insulated? Which parts of the house are best insulated? And then question three, give two reasons why a person might want to ensure that their property is not poorly insulated. So, which parts of the house are poorly insulated? Well, looking at this thermogram, the white and yellow areas are the warmest. So these are the poorly insulated parts. And looking at this thermogram, it's the roof and the windows that are poorly insulated. Question two, which parts of the house are best insulated? Well, looking at this thermogram, it's a blue and green and purple areas, which are the coolest. So these are the best insulated. So you can see, looking at this thermogram, it's these purple, blue and green walls, which are losing the least heat. Question three. Give two reasons why a person might want to ensure their property is not poorly insulated. Well, from an economic perspective, a poorly insulated house is going to lose more energy and therefore it's going to cost that homeowner more money to heat. From an environmental perspective, it means that it will create more pollution, particularly carbon dioxide, in order to heat that house. Now, how does that work? Well, when that house is heated, usually that involves um, combustion of fossil fuels. So say you have a gas central heating system. When that natural gas undergoes combustion, one of the products of combustion is carbon dioxide, which we know contributes to global warming. So if you're wasting a lot of energy, so a lot of heat energy is leaving the house, then you're going to have to use more fossil fuel. So there's going to be more combustion of gas, for example, in order to keep that house warm. So a poorly insulated house is very bad for the environment. So where does heat escape from a house? Well, in a poorly insulated house, heat is lost from the following places. Approximately 20% of heat is lost through the roof, 12% through the windows, 4% due to drafts through gaps around and under the door, 28% through the floor, and 36% through the wall. So if we look at this diagram here, or this drawing here, it shows two houses. So you've got house A and you've got house B. You can see there's a front door there of house A. There's a front door of house B. Now, these houses are semi-detached, yet you can see that house B has lots of snow on its roof. Whereas with house A, that snow has melted. 
Now, what that suggests is house A, it's poorly insulated. Well, it's roof at least is poorly insulated because heat must be escaping through that roof in order to melt that snow. So how can we use insulation to reduce a loss of heat energy from a house? So during the next few slides, I'm going to provide information on the types of insulation, how each type of insulation stops heat transfer, and the type of heat transfer that is stopped. What I would like you to do is, as I go through those slides, I'd like you to complete a table like this one. Now, because you're not aware yet of how much space you'll need for each type of insulation, I'd recommend that you don't draw your lines down here until you've completed each row in the table. So type of insulation, type of heat transfer stopped, and how insulation stops heat transfer, so how it works. So the first type of insulation is a draft excluder. Now draft excluders reduce heat loss through gaps around doors. Now in a poorly insulated house, approximately 4% of heat energy is due to drafts escaping through gaps around doors. Now, a draft is a movement of air due to a convection current. So the draft allows that heat, that warm air, to escape under and around the door. Now, there are different types of draft excluders available, and usually, they're hairy or spongy strips that can be used to close the gaps around the doors and windows. So you can see here, you've got a hairy strip that's being screwed to the bottom of the door there to close that gap. And you can see here, you've got a spongy tape that can be attached all the way around the door frame again to seal any gaps. Now you can even make your own draft excluders like this one before, okay? This is just some material stuffed with rice. Now that again, that homemade draft excluder will seal that gap around the door. So if you're completing your row in the table for draft excluders, what they do is they reduce convection. So heat loss through convection. How do they do this? Well, they close gaps around doors and windows. So the next type of insulation we're gonna look at is cavity wall insulation and how that can reduce heat loss through walls. Now, we saw that in a poorly insulated house, approximately 36% of heat energy is lost through walls. So that's the largest amount of heat loss. Now, your outside walls or exterior walls have a cavity, an empty space between the two layers of brick. So you have like an outside exterior wall and then you have an inside exterior wall. Now, why do they use this gap? Why is there a gap, a space between these two walls? Well, if there's air trapped in that cavity, that air will act as an insulator because there's a gas. It reduces any heat loss due to conduction through the bricks. However, air still allows heat loss 
through convection. So how do we stop the convection? Well, this is where we use cavity wall insulation. And what cavity wall insulation is, is where a plastic foam can be pumped into this cavity, this space between the two walls, to prevent convection. And how this works is this foam will solidify and because it's solidified, the air can't circulate. You can't get conven convection currents. So by having a cavity wall and having this solidified foam between the two walls, you will prevent heat loss through conduction, but also through convection. Foil sheets behind radiators can also reduce heat through walls. So you can see that this gentleman here is placing one of these foil sheets behind his radiator. Now you can see the shiny side here is facing the back of the radiator. Now radiators produce infrared radiation and some of this heat energy is going to be absorbed by the wall behind the radiator and heat the wall up. Now, if this is an exterior wall, that's going to cause a lot of heat loss from your home. So heat energy absorbed by exterior walls will then escape from your house. So a shiny foil is be placed between the wall and the radiator. And how this works is a foil will prevent heat radiation reaching the wall because it will actually reflect it back into the room. And this type of insulation is incredibly effective and very cheap to install. So when you're completing your table on how foil sheets behind radiators reduce heat through walls, they prevent heat loss through radiation. They reflect that radiation back into the radiator and the room. Now, double glazing can also reduce heat loss through windows. Now, in a poorly insulated house, approximately 12% of heat energy is lost through windows. Now, double glazing consists of two panes of glass with a very narrow gap between them. Now, as you can see, this is quite similar to what you had with cavity walls. Air is trapped between the two panes and that air acts as an insulator and that air reduces heat loss by conduction. Now if you want to make that double glazing even more effective you can actually remove the air in the gap and that air is pumped out to create a vacuum so an absence of particles, no gas between those two panes. And that's going to improve the insulation because it prevents any convection current. So by having that vacuum, that prevents heat loss through convection. So double glazing mainly reduces heat loss through conduction but if you have a vacuum between those two layers of glass or two panes of glass, that's also going to prevent any convection taking place. Now, double glazing can be really expensive and it can take many years before you actually make any savings at all through reduced energy bills, because it's gonna take many years to cover the cost of that installation. It is a popular option though, 
And there's mainly two reasons for that. And that's because double glazing provides noise insulation. So if you've got a busy street outside your house or a busy road, then that double glazing can prevent a lot of noise entering your home. But the other reason why people have new windows fitted and double glazing fitted is because it's what's known as aesthetically pleasing. New windows make a house look more attractive. Now, curtains can be a much more cost effective solution to reduce heat loss through windows, especially these thermal curtains here. Now, curtains provide obviously a less costly alternative and they also provide noise insulation. Now, heat energy will escape through gaps around the window. And by fitting curtains and closing those curtains, you're going to reduce heat loss because they prevent drafts. So a draft is movement of air due to a convection current. So drafts of warm air can't leave the house through those gaps around the window. Now curtains are often opaque and that will actually stop um, radiated heat passing through them as well. So curtains prevent heat loss because they prevent convection currents, drafts, taking heat out of the home and they also prevent radiated heat from passing through them too. Now, carpets are also an incredibly effective method by which you can reduce heat loss through the floor. In a poorly insulated home, approximately 28% of heat energy is lost through the floor. Now, heat energy is transferred from homes by conduction through the floor. And due to a carpet's low thermal conductivity, because it's got all these air spaces in it, they act as excellent heat insulators. So it's the air trapped in the carpet that makes it a poor conductor. Now, loft insulation is also used to insulate a home. And loft insulation will reduce heat loss through a roof. So radiators warm the air in houses. And this warm air is carried around the house by convection currents. If we didn't have roof insulation, that air would continue to rise. And that warm air would get into the loft and that heat would then escape through the roof because it would be lost due to conduction through the roof tiles. Loft insulation helps to reduce heat loss through the roof. And loft insulation contains trapped air and that forms that insulating layer between the loft and the rest of the house. So if we look at these different types of loft insulation, you can see that people might roll out fiberglass. Now this is a bit like cotton wool or candy floss. And it's got air trapped in that wool-like material. And as we know, air is a good insulator and a poor conductor. And because that air is trapped in the fiberglass, that air can't circulate. So fiberglass will prevent heat loss through conduction, but also through convection. Now, another alternative is this spray foam. Now, this spray foam is quite similar 
to the foam used for cavity wall insulation. So this foam is sprayed onto the ceiling of the loft. And you can see that this foam then solidifies. Now this foam has got air spaces locked up in that foam. And because air is a really poor conductor, it's got low thermal conductivity, it prevents heat loss through convection and conduction. Conduction, because the air is a poor insulator, and convection, because that foam has solidified, there's no convection currents because the air is unable to circulate. And then finally, some people use these foam boards with metallic surfaces. Now, the foam board is very similar to this spray foam, but it comes in sheets, very thick sheets. And again, that foam board has air locked up within that foam. And that air is a poor conductor, but being locked up in that solid foam means that that air cannot circulate and that prevents heat loss through convection too. Now, the reason it has a metallic surface, this is to reflect any heat radiation back into the house. So these foam boards prevent heat loss through conduction, convection, and radiation. So when we consider what type of insulation we use in our home, it's important to consider payback time. Now, payback time is a time taken for the cost of installing the insulation to equal the savings made from reduced energy costs. So payback time is usually measured in years. And to calculate payback time, we take the cost of that insulation and we divide it by the saving we make on our energy bills each year. So with the example of the silver foil sheets are put behind radiators, these sheets cost £20 and they usually save a homeowner £40 per year in their energy bills. So the payback time would be calculated by saying £20, which is the cost of the insulation, divided by £40, which is a saving made each year. So the payback time would be 0.5 years or six months. So after six months, any savings that you have made to your energy costs have covered the cost of purchasing and installing that type of insulation. After six months, you're going to be making money because you are going to be saving money on your energy bill. To make sure that you've had some practice at calculating payback time, I'd like you to calculate the payback time for these types of insulation. Pause your video to give yourself time to calculate the payback time for each row in the table. Right, okay, so we know that heat escapes through the roof. Um, we know the cost of heat escaping per year through our roof is 150 pounds. So that's how much money we waste as a result of heat escaping through our roof. To insulate our roof with, say, fiberglass, it would cost about £300. So our payback time would be two years. 
because it would be the cost of insulation divided by the annual savings. So 300 divided by 150 means that it takes two years for the payback time. Now with double glazing, we know that heat does escape through windows. So to install double glazing would cost us about 5,000 pounds. But the cost to us of heat escaping for our windows per year is only about £50. So to work out payback time, we would do cost of insulation 5000 divided by how much that double glazing would save us per year, which is £50. So it would take 100 years before you started making a saving from installing double glazing. Now, you might think, well, why do people do it? Well, again, just remember, people install double glazing, not just because it, it stops heat escaping. The main two reasons why people have double glazing is they like to have new windows because it's aesthetically pleasing, it looks nice, it makes your property look more attractive. But secondly, it prevents noise entering your home. So it insulates your house, not only um, heat loss, but also noise. Now, heat can also escape through drafts around doors. And the cost of heat escaping per year is £50. To add draft excluders around the doors, the cost of insulation of those draft excluders would also be £50. So if you were to calculate your payback time, you would do the cost of the insulation of those draft excluders divided by the cost of heat escaping. So 50 divided by 50 would give you one year. So one year before you start making money back through savings. Now, we also know that a lot of heat will escape through the walls. And that in terms of the cost to us of heat escaping through walls, it costs us about £100 per year. Now, the cost of having cavity wall insulation is about £750. So £750 which is a cost of insulation divided by the annual savings of a hundred pound, that means it would take 7.5 years payback time. So just to check that we've understood what we've covered in today's tutorial, what I would like you to do is to complete this true or false quiz on reducing unwanted energy transfers. For each statement one to nine, I'd like you to say whether or not you think it's true or false. Pause your video to give yourself time to answer these nine questions. And then when you're happy with your answers, press play so you can mark them as I go through the answers. Okay, so if we look at question one here, it says wasted energy is another name for this dissipated energy. Well, we know that that is true. So blue represents true. Wasted energy is another name for dissipated energy. Question two, energy usually dissipates into the thermal energy stores. And again, that's true. Energy does usually dissipate into the thermal energy stores. Question three, lubricants can be used to increase friction. Now we know that one's false because lubricants actually decrease friction. Question four, if a material 
had a low thermal conductivity, it means it can transfer a lot of energy in a short amount of time. Well, that answer is also false. If material had a high thermal conductivity, it would be able to transfer a lot of energy in a short amount of time. All right, question five. Cavity walls reduce the radiation through walls. That one is also false. And that's because cavity walls reduce heat loss through conduction. By having that air space between those two layers of brick, that prevents air, or sorry, that prevents heat loss through conduction through the bricks because air is a really good insulator. Question six Double glazing reduces conduction through windows. Yes, it does. Because again, by having that airspace between those two panes of glass, air is a really good insulator. Question seven. That's false. Carpets will actually decrease heat loss through floors. And it is because of their low thermal conductivity. So they don't increase, they decrease heat loss. Question eight. Cavity wall insulation involves the removal of air from the gap in a cavity wall to create a vacuum. Well, that's false. Because when we install cavity wall insulation, we inject a foam between those two layers of brick. And that foam will solidify. And what that foam does is it prevents heat loss through conduction and convection. Why conduction? Because air is trapped in that solidified foam. Air is a good insulator, poor conductor. But why it prevents convection as well is because it's a solid foam that air cannot circulate. You will not get convection currents. And then finally, question nine. Foil sheets behind radiators prevent heat radiation from reaching the wall by reflecting it back into the room. Well, that's true. So there's one last thing that you might want to do for your revision, is you might want to print screen this slide. And then for each box, I'd like you to say how what each method of insulation is. So you can see number one, is cavity wall and cavity wall insulation because you've got this cavity but you can also see this foam injected into that cavity. Say how that cavity wall and cavity wall insulation prevents heat losses and again do it for one, two, three and four. And then once you've finished your poster might look something like this. Now that would be a nice poster to use for revision. Now, thank you for listening to my tutorial. I hope that's helped you. And please subscribe to get further tutorials for your GCC Science exam.